Income tax 2022-2023 makers depreciation examples part number two using tax software. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040 populated using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, single filer, Mr. Anderson living in Beverly Hills, 90210. No W-2 income. We've got the Schedule C flowing into line eight. Let's check that flow through. Schedule C, as we can see, profit or loss from business. Income minus the expenses. The net income flowing into Schedule 1. There it is on Schedule 1, flowing into the first page of the Form 1040 on line number eight. We also have self-employment tax we need to consider. The Schedule C then, bottom line, net income flows in to the schedule se which is then calculating the self-employment tax social security and medicare at the 14 129 which flows into the schedule to support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it which flows into the form 1040 page number two, not the income tax, but the self-employment tax. Half of that is deductible. So once again, the deductible above the line portion, schedule C, bottom line, flows into the schedule SE, calculating the self-employment tax. And then in essence, half of that, the 7,065 in this case, flows into the for schedule one, page number two, there's the 7065 which flows into the form 1040 and we've got the 10 000, the 100,000 minus the 7065 is the 92935 standard deduction at the 12950 then we are letting the software calculate the qualified business income deduction worksheet here giving us the 63988 page number 2 calculating the tax 9692 plus the self employment tax uh, 14129 gives us the 23821 uh, we're saying that we paid 30000 in there gives the bottom line of 6179 now we're focused on the schedule c of course which is flowing into the to the line 8 let's go to the schedule c we're looking at the depreciation so let's just put a baseline of a depreciable property first and then we'll uh, do an example problem related to it. So I'm going to go back on over, just noting on the data input, and your data input might be different. We're just going to do a generic machinery. Machinery. Remembering that as we enter data in real life, we want to be as specific as possible, but we're going to be generic for the problem because we're focused on the categories in the calculation. So the category, let's say it's machinery and equipment placed in service, let's say 030122. And then the cost, I'm going to say 10,000 for a round number. And then the method that I'm going to use is five years makers. And then remember that if I was to just jump on over and let the system do the calculation, it's usually going to try to default and assume that I might be able to take the software, at least the special depreciation uh, deduction, which it is populating here. So we're going to talk about special depreciation a little bit later. But notice that adjusts the, in essence, basis. So now we put it on the books as an asset, but I got to expense the whole thing. Now, I think the easiest way to think about depreciation is to remove the special in 179. Think about how makers works in general, uh, the, the normal depreciation method, and then add the 179 kind of components on top of that, noting that the 179 and special depreciations will probably change uh, in the future. You know, because, and whereas the baseline depreciation, the maker system, you would think would will, will stay there uh, long term. Long term memory. Because that's based on accounting concepts. So now I've removed the special depreciation, and so now you've got the ten thousand, 
and the 10,000, and now it's using a, a DB, which is a decline, double declining 200 DB declining balance, half year convention. So, and rec recall that if I was to just calculate that out, it would be something like 10,000. If it was straight line, I would divide it by five years and there would be 2,000, but it's double declining. So let's get the straight line rate, taking that divided by 10,000, gives us the straight line rate of 20%, or I can take one over the years, five, 20% times two, there's the double declining rate. If I multiply that times the 10,000, I get to 4,000, but that would be if it was a whole year, I have a half year, so I'm gonna divide that by two, and that's where I get back to the 2,000 here for the current year. All right, given that recap, let's go back and take a look at another problem. So during the year you bought uh, a, a machine, seven year property for 4,000, office furniture, seven year property for 1,000, and computer, five year property for 5,000. You placed the machine in service in January, the furniture in September, and the computer in October. You do not elect 179 deduction. Uh, and none of the items is qualified property for purposes of claiming special depreciation. You place property in service during the last three months of the year, so you must first determine if if you have to use the mid-quarter convention. Okay, so the issue here is, notice it's defaulting to a half-year convention. Now, if I put a lot of stuff in there that's gonna be for the, for the end of the year, the IRS is skeptical that I'm trying to cheat them by, by taking a six months of depreciation when I put it in at the end of the year. So we want to then, that's what we're kind of testing out here because it might switch over to a mid-quarter convention. So let's say that we, we do this, we're gonna say we put in uh, machinery and they said this was seven year machinery though. So this is gonna be category of, let's say machinery and equipment. So we'll keep it there. And then I'm gonna say, okay, 10, and that was 4,000 but it's seven year property. So I'm gonna say, okay, this is seven year property. So I'm gonna say makers double declining for seven years. And then we also put in a uh, for, for 4,000 office equipment. So office furniture, furniture. And I'm gonna say two category. This is, this is office furniture now. That's gonna be category number two. And this first one, by the way, uh, was placed in service in January. And the second one, so January, the furniture in September. So this was in September. So say 091522. And that was, the furniture was for the 1000. And the method there is gonna be 57 as well. And then we put a computer in place. So let's do another one. Add a computer, computer. And that's gonna be two, but this time the computer is gonna be, let's call it uh, equipment. I'm gonna say this is going to be uh, equipment. And this was put in place in October. So let's say this was on 10, 15, Two two, and it was for five thousand, and this is five year property. So I'm going to say this is going to be five year property. So we'll go with that one, and then I'm going to remove any special and 179 depreciation. So hopefully I got that correct. If I jump on over here, then the point is uh, you'll note that it switched to a mid quarter convention as opposed to uh, a mid-year convention that we're using now. And that's because more of the more of the stuff that would have been in a mid-year convention have now been, uh, more of it are, are in the end of the year. So the IRS is gonna be skeptical of that and force us to kind of jump on over to a mid-quarter convention. So let's just read through the rest of that. Uh, the 5,000 basis of the of the computer, which you placed in service during the last three months, the fourth quarter of the tax year, is more than 40% of the total basis of all the property, 10,000, you placed in service for the year. So therefore, you must use the mid-quarter convention, which means you're going to get less depreciation for the year. So that's the idea we want to think. If you hear a half-year convention, you might think, hey, look, I'm going to buy everything in the end of the year 
because then I can get a bigger convention. But Makers doesn't kind of allow you to do that. Uh, you still could think about whether or not this, this 179 and the special depreciation would allow you to do uh, something like that. It's the general idea. In other words, it allows you to do that, but you have to switch from a half year uh, to, uh, uh, to, a, to a, a mid quarter convention, which means it's gonna lower the depreciation. So then we could see the impact on the first year, the, the 107, 1,250. If I look at 2023, the next year, we're at the 255, the total is at 3,012, as opposed to the current year where we are at uh, the 1,357. Now we'll talk more about like dispositions later, but let's just get a, a quick look at that on one of these. If I go back on over, I'm gonna delete two of these so we can just see one at a time and delete this item. And let's say that this was on the books in the prior year of 2000, uh, of 20, let's make this two years back. And it was seven year property. So if I pull that back on over then, so now I'm gonna see it's seven year property. If I enter something into the system that was on the books in a prior year, that probably would only happen from a logistical standpoint uh, if it was a new client. Otherwise I would have the depreciation schedules. So I would have to actually enter the prior year uh, depreciation into the system, which means you'd wanna make sure that you get the depreciation schedules from the prior uh, software. So I'm just gonna make up a number from the prior year, just to give an example number of the prior year depreciation. I'm actually gonna change it to 10,000 cost, prior depreciation 4,200. So if I pull that back on over to my schedule here, now we've got uh, the 10,000 prior year depreciation 4,200, current year depreciation 1,749. So that means the book value of this thing is 10,000 minus the 4200 minus the 1749. Now, if I dispose of the property in the current year, that could by, be by me just getting rid of it because I no longer use it anymore. Or if I sell it, then, then the question is, there could be a gain or loss on the property. And to our point here, there could be some partial year, basically depreciation that would happen in uh, the year of sale, which might be using the similar convention as we have here, the half year convention. In other words, if I dispose of it, then I might use the same convention to basically calculate that last period's uh, depreciation. So to see that more clearly, let's actually use a five year. I'm gonna go back on over and say, let's say this was a five year property and use the straight line method. So if I use a straight line method, then I'm gonna go, now I, I've got 2000 in the current year and the prior two years would be calculated at a, a straight line method of, let's say 3000, say 3000 here. Okay, and so so then let's say that we, we dispose or sell this thing. So let's say the date sold was in the current year. Let's say it's the beginning of the year, 02, somewhere 01, 02, that we sold it in the current year. Uh, basis adjustment land, we're gonna say that that's when it was sold and the sales price is, let's say the sales price is higher than what we purchased it for or higher than what the adjusted basis is. Let's make it 8,000. So I'm gonna go back on over. So now our, our main point here is that it calculated the current depreciation of the 1,000 is, is the main point because it used that half year convention in the year of sale. In other words, in the current year, if it was straight line, it would be 10,000 divided by five, 2,000 each year. But it assumes that we sold it in the middle of the year, even though we sold it in February. So it took that and of course divided it by two, which is easy to see with the straight line of the 1,000. So that same convention that we used on the purchase is gonna be used on the disposition. Now, uh, no, we'll, we'll, we all won't go into it in a lot of detail here because we're focused on depreciation, but the accelerated methods of the depreciation make it so that when I sell the property, it's more likely that I'm gonna end up with a gain if I sell it for cash, right? Because now if I over depreciated it in the current years and then I sold it, it's likely I got 
more deduction that I should have because if I sell it for a price greater than the book value, then that would mean that, that, that I over depreciated it, right? Generally. So if I had, so for example, 10,000 minus the 3,000 and minus the 1,000 gives us a book value of 6,000. I sold it for 8,000, which is a $2,000 gain that would be calculated on the sale. So if I look at the section, the 4797, we've got the 2000 pulling in here. And so there's, there we have it. If I pull that into the first page of the form 1040, we've got then uh, the 1000, uh, the 100 and 1000. Let's go to schedule two, where I've got the 99,000 here and then the other gains of the 2000. Now there's also an issue then with with regards to should that gain be capital gains because i sold machinery and equipment or should it be uh, ordinary income gains now note that if i go back on down here and look at page two i don't see any other tax calculation happening here because in essence it put it on the books uh, as ordinary income not having a separate tax for capital gains capital gains tax which kind of makes sense because I got the deduction of, of depreciation at ordinary income rates. So you would think I would have to record the income at ordinary income. Now, if I sold it for more than the purchase price, so if I purchased it for 10,000 and I, and I sold it for 11,000, which is only likely to happen if it was like a, a building because machinery will go down in value. So it's not likely you're gonna sell it for more than you purchased it for but it might happen with a building. Now you can see that I have a tax worksheet to figure the 1,000 that's gonna be taxed at possibly favorable rates, capital gains rates. So that's what it gets a little bit messy uh, with regards to the sales because of those differences in depreciations. The accelerated depreciation makes it likely that you're gonna end up with a gain. And then you're, and then the question is, uh, do, you do you have these two different rates, capital gains versus versus the the ordinary income so here we have ordinary income gains and losses down here and then up top there's the 1000 up top for sale exchange of property used in business okay so i'm not going to get into that more detail let's take a look at another one actually let's look at this in a little bit more detail and play with it a little bit more in uh excel over here so just to get an idea of this if i said if i said for example that i i purchased something at a cost of 10,000 and then we depreciated it. So I'm going to say prior year, prior year depre was, we said 3,000, I believe. And then I said the current year, let's put this over here. And then prior year depreciation is that, let's put that here. And then the current year, current year depre. Let's do the calculation for that. If, if, if it was straight line, the cost, easiest way to do straight line is the cost is 10,000 and the straight line rate or, or years, years were five. So D pre per year would be equal to 10,000 divided by five, 2000. But then we have the half year, half, year convention which i'm going to say divided by two gives us the depreciation in the current year so current year d pre i know i'm not spelling this great or anything so there is that let's do this equals this divided by that and so then the total total d pre d pre over the life of this thing equals the sum of that okay so that means the book value is going to let's put this over here equals the sum i'm sorry not the sum equals ten thousand minus four thousand equals ten thousand minus four thousand or six thousand now, if I sold it, let's actually put this here. If I sold it for 
anywhere between 6,000 and 10,000, then I would end up in a gain and you would think I would have to record the, the gain is kind of like ordinary on ordinary income rates. But if I go over the 10,000, that's where you think. So if I sell it now, if I sell the sale of this thing, let's say I sold it for, what did I say over here? 11,000, 11,000 minus the book value, the book value of 6,000 means I have a gain equals the 11 minus the six. 5,000. So that's no problem. But then the question is, is it ordinary or, or, or capital? And you would think that because I got a benefit of 4,000 of deductions, I would have to eat that up. So the Depre portion is going to be 4,000 is going to be 4,000 at ordinary Depre at ordinary, ordinary income. And then and then possibly capital gain, possibly capital gain rates for the 1000. That would kind of make sense, right? And that's what, and that's what's kind of, that's what's basically happening here. In essence, you've got the property 11,000 minus the 10,000 that gives you the four, the, the depreciation of the 4,000, the, I'm sorry, the 11,000, the 10,000 depreciation is 4,000. The adjusted basis is 6,000. The total gain is 5,000. The depreciation allowed or allowable was 4,000. You got a benefit for that, in other words, on ordinary income uh, rates. And then if you take the 5,000 minus the 4,000, you've got the 1,000, which is going to be the, the amount that is over and above the ordinary income that flows into the 4797 of the 1,000 here gain, if any, uh, uh, of the 1000 and then the 4000 down here that flows into schedule one as we saw of uh, the 4000 which is in the other gains and then on form 1040 you've got that included here and then the 1000 up top that's also flowing through to the schedule d which is a familiar form which is usually often people think of where we sell the stocks and bonds stocks and bonds charts and pie this has a short term and then the long term portion on the schedule d now obviously the other thing that could happen over here is that we could sell it at a loss this is less likely to be the case because of the accelerated depreciation especially if we had 179 and special depreciation but if we sold it for something under or just disposed of it sold it for nothing in essence let's say we say uh, 2000 then i can go back on over and say okay now uh the 4797 we've got a negative amount here it's going to be a loss the loss then pulling in to the schedule one of uh the 4000 in this case and then it's flowing into the form uh 1040. now note that losses are going to be something the iris is usually going to be more skeptical of because obviously if you have a loss then you may be able to take the loss against uh against other income generally but if it's a if it's a business loss then it'd be a business uh, type of loss and uh so that's going to be the general idea by the way you'd think that because it was a business business property notice there's no there's no change in the tax tables it's not using capital gains rates or anything like for the loss for example uh using different rates on on basically the loss in that example